put that in. They the come in. We treat it just like one of us. Okay. That's, that's one of us. Cool. Yeah, one of us. We, one of us. we <laughs> accept that one of us. Cool. Hey folks, it's the blind guy here coming back at you with another Should You Watch episode. And on this episode, we're taking a look at 2013's The Wolf of Wall Street, directed by Martin Scorsese, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, Jonah Hill, also featuring Rob Reiner and Matthew McConaughey. It's got quite a few actors in it, actually, which Martin Scorsese movies usually do. He's able to pull a lot of big name actors. And... Martin Scorsese has a style to his movies. If you took 10 of his movies and then took one out, put one in there that was somebody else's, you would probably recognize which one was not his. He has a certain style to how he makes his movies. And I do like some of his movies. I do not love probably any of them, but I can appreciate his talent as a director. That being said... Words cannot convey how much I hate this movie. I absolutely despise this movie. I first saw it probably almost 10 years ago. I think I saw it very close to when it came out. I did not see it in the theater. And then I just rewatched it about last week. And I thought, well, maybe there's something I'm missing in this movie. I'll check it out again. Because I was pretty mad on it the first time I saw it. Nope hate it more now than I did back then. And I think it's probably because I've seen just a lot more movies. And I've seen a lot more of his movies, to be honest. And I like them better than this one. So there's several things that I just cannot stand about this movie. First of all, it has narration, which drives me nuts. A lot of his movies do. I can tolerate it in some movies. I love it in A Christmas Story. I love it in The Sandlot. It's great in those movies. I don't like it in serious movies. And it just, I guess, Double Indemnity is one of the only movies I could think of that has some narration that doesn't bother me or a few of the film noir movies. But this one, it just does not work. Um, So that's one strike against it. Strike number two is it does this thing where it's trying to show you the dangers of drug use and that type of lifestyle. But then at the same time, it's kind of glorifying it. It's kind of got one foot on the side of the road that says drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Okay. And the other foot that says, yeah, drugs are hilarious and fun to joke about. And I just, it's like, pick a side, okay? Either just tell us that they're amazing and and you'll have a great time with them or tell us that they'll ruin your life because I don't think you can have it both ways. And a lot of the scenes in this movie, I swear, there is a scene where Leonardo DiCaprio crawls to his car and the scene probably takes about five minutes and you watch him crawl the whole way. Also watch Leonardo DiCaprio and Jonah Hill's characters like mumble and roll around with each other on drugs for probably a good 10 minutes later on in the movie. And the movie's not a short movie either. What did you do? It could be a lot shorter if they cut that stuff out of it. And it's just, I don't find that stuff funny and I don't find it interesting to watch. And it's, I don't know what he's going for by showing that. It's just, and let me know in the comments if you think that's great. And then he does this thing with, with the dialogue in this movie that... So we have two characters, and I'll make the dialogue up, but this is very similar to how it is in the movie. <clears throat> what are you doing? Uh, I was I was just going to go up the elevator. You were going to go up the elevator? Yeah. Why were you going to go up the elevator? Well, I wanted to get to the top floor. You were going to the top floor? Yeah, I was going to the top floor. Why were you going to the top floor? Well, I can get a better view from there. And then this guy, because he's mad that this guy was going to go to the, the, up the elevator, will do something outrageous to this guy. And then everybody else around will cheer him on and laugh and clap and think it's hilarious. And that type of scene is in this movie 10 times, probably. 
Uh, there's a scene where Jonah Hill confronts a guy for cleaning out his fish bowl, and then they have that same conversation where they repeat the same thing back and forth a whole bunch. Maybe you clean your fish bowl? I, I just, I had a minute, and I... You had a minute? And today you needed to clean the fish bowl? Today? I had finished my paper. And then eventually Jonah Hill eats the guy's fish, and everybody thinks it's hilarious. Pretty fun, huh? There's other scenes like there's... This bothers me, too, because it's actually some technical issues, which I don't expect from Scorsese. There are scenes where they have dubbed, you know, obviously they dubbed the audio, but then the person who's talking, their mouth isn't moving, if you pay close attention. I'm not talking about the scene in Switzerland where the two are having a conversation with their minds or whatever. I'm actually talking about where the guy's supposed to be talking, but if you look at his mouth, he's not actually saying anything. Um, I told you, 70,000. Well, technically 72,000 last month, something like that. It's like, why would you leave that in there? Why can't you find a way to shoot that shot differently or edit it differently? I just sloppy stuff is in this movie. And I just, it's got all kinds of nudity and stuff in a way over the top manner. Like as somebody told me this movie makes her feel uncomfortable but not like in a good way of uncomfortable like some movies can make you feel like just a genuinely uncomfortable because of the over-the-top nature this is the type of movie that to me frat boys would love like this is if you asked a frat boy what their favorite type of movie was or favorite movie they'll say the wolf of wall street because most of the movies like a frat house like i just i cannot stand this movie i hate this movie um, it does the thing where Scorsese likes to have a, de- a giant domestic dispute in the movie. This has got a couple of those in it. Uh, Casino does that. Raging Bull does that. I think Goodfellas has that. Yeah, Goodfellas has that. Where you have the couple just screaming and arguing at each other with thick accents because everybody has an accent in his movies. I just, ugh. I don't know, guys. And I'm not even in a bad mood today. I just, I can't, I can't recommend this one. I'm not even going to put a link for it in the description. I'll put a link for uh, for a good movie. How about that? I'll put, <laughs> I'll put a link for a different movie in the description. If you want to help support the channel, you can use the link in the description to watch a movie. If you use that same link to get to Amazon and order things, it still helps the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. If you want to sponsor a video, use the email address in the description, and we'll set something up, and you can sponsor a video and have your name in the video and everything. You can determine the topic. I help. I just thank you guys so much for all your support, the comments, the subscribing, and it just it makes a huge difference. And I just thank you guys for everything that you do. I'll see you on the next episode. I'll be in a better mood, I'm sure, because I'll pick a movie that I really think you should watch. So those are my thoughts on 2013's The Wolf of Wall Street, and I'll see you on the next episode of A Blind Guy's View. Later's on the Menjay. Later's on the Menjay.